So I started um, at Queen's 2018, I graduated and then joined EY in September of 2018 and I've been there ever since um, and I've, now I'm a senior associate and um, starting from first year working my way up. And probably my highlight at EY has been working on a big client in um, Boston. They're on the stock exchange over there which was really exciting and that's been a really big highlight for me. Different reasons time management would have been one because you know very much your time structured at uni and um, where it's not just as structured and there's not um, people aren't driving you towards a certain goal that's all up to you so where you want to go in your career is up to you there's you know there's no one driving you towards an end goal here so it really is you have to take that sort of attitude that you know if you're going to go forward and you're going to do it and you want to you're going to decide whichever path you're going to go down that has to be driven by you of course you'll get help but you have to be the ultimate driver in that. I would say, um, I would just say be confident would be the main thing and ask questions every day. Like you're, you'll never be done learning. No one's ever done learning. Even those right up the management are learning off someone. Um, so always ask questions and always try and understand why you're performing the task. Because once you understand the why, then the rest will really follow afterwards and that's what advice I would give to them, definitely. Um, yeah, okay, well, so EY really, it has three core values and it's ultimately what it looks for um, when you're interviewing and once you actually come into the job. So it's firstly they're looking for people who demonstrate integrity, respect and teamwork, people with energy, enthusiasm and the courage to lead and lastly, people who build relationships based on doing the right things. So really, in, in terms of skills, that this would be people with like a strong work ethic, but can also work together as a team, but not being afraid to lead that team, you know, either by example or direction. Is this, this is something you're gonna to need to do once you come into EY. And then lastly, we'll want you to build relationships with your team, with people in work and also our clients. And it's very important now because of COVID especially that building that relationship is vital. Um, so really to develop these skills, I, I really encourage students probably just to throw themselves into anything they can. So internships and then there's opportunities through Queen's. Um, like So I'm thinking activities within the university, such as the societies, are, they're vital. There's sports as well and there's other clubs. And then also doing this outside. I don't know whether you play a sport or there are other clubs outside. And even I think Chloe touched on volunteering, doing all this will develop all these skills, working in a team leadership and even improving your own confidence. So I think in doing this, this is how you'll get there. And uh, yeah. In the current workplace, so like working online and adaptability, it's been, you know, major important since probably last March and um, the start of the pandemic. Like we need to be able to adapt now to these ever changing environments, you know, and I think students can apply this by adapting to new challenges and thinking outside of the box because you know students will have had to already do that for themselves in their own learning within university. And then the next thing, probably coping with change is so important as well, because your job is never going to be the same from day to day. So the better you can cope with this change, the more of an asset you will become. And then probably the last thing is uh, the tech platforms. They've, they're major players in any industry and they help with so many jobs. So if you have the knowledge to use these, then that will really further you. Like I know in my own work, I use data analytics most days and without it, you would be really, things would take a lot longer. So definitely embrace it. And if you're getting the chance, you need to build on that skill, take it. And um, well, probably while the guidance is, if possible, work from home, you will mostly be working from home, although the offices for EY are open for people who want to go in. But as things are changing, like EY will be looking to adopt the blend of bo both where possible. So a lot of people are really eager now to get back to the office and get into the office, and which will be really good, you know, to meet people. And But I think then once that, um, once we've eased back into the office again, a blended approach will probably be adapted. Certainly in my line of work where we work our clients and not just always from the office, so it is very possible. So I think you will see maybe people mixing in and about, but definitely we'll be back in the office come whenever we're allowed to open up again. 
Uh, well, I think a positive attitude is so important in the workplace and probably the most important thing that you'll need, like in terms of work and what you're being asked to complete and interactions with the client. Like it'll allow you to keep spirits up yourself and your team members and then also to help your team members by taking on work and alleviating pressure on the rest of the team. So I do believe it is vital and certainly our feedback, if we're getting feedback from those above, a positive attitude is always something that is mentioned. Um, look, I would say confidence is probably one of the most important things in work. I think I've mentioned it so many times. Um, so you definitely need to be confident in your own ability. Um, like you are, you're, you will have so much ability. You're in demand. Like everyone that's going to want to graduate, you're in such demand. But to increase your confidence, I would like suggest increasing your own knowledge. And um, that's within the workplace because with knowledge comes power, and with that comes response. Or with that comes confidence. And then as well as this, I would receive feedback from those above you and then know what you're doing well because once you know what you're doing well that will also increase your confidence you'll be able to pinpoint what you're good at and that will help you feel confident in yourself i would say you definitely can't fake it though um although with increased confidence like it will boost your performance because you will take on new tasks and maybe try different things that you wouldn't maybe have tried before I think it's, it's absolutely okay to admit you don't know something starting out in the job. Uh, like there will be no expectation in you for prior knowledge. Certainly, even in EY, we hire graduates from all degrees um, because they all give a different um, perspective on the challenges we face in our line of work. So there's no, no requirement to know anything. And you'll be coached by your superiors and then by any mentors you have as well. Like at EY, we have a great coaching culture and we look down through any questions that you'll have. And also you're going to have your training at the start, probably a few days to a week, and you're going to have training throughout your career as well. So honestly, it's fine. Admit you don't know something, but don't don't try and bluff your way through it either. Uh, I think it's it's majorly important to find a job that excites and challenges you. It's, it's vital, you know, it'll keep you engaged and it'll ultimately drive job satisfaction. You're going to be wanting to do something that really challenges you on a day-to-day -day basis and this will help towards your longevity and your career and even with the employer and with the line of work that you're in and ultimately towards building a successful career and improving yourself and your own knowledge. So look, my major driver is probably job satisfaction and the career that excites me so at school I actually I love business and financial accounting so I actually had work experience in these areas and then took them up as my degree and because I didn't just, I wasn't just interested in accounting, but the wider business world, that's why I picked insurance, because you work with a whole range of businesses, looking at the processes from financial and non-financial aspects, which is really, really interesting. And probably one of the last things would be the driving force is a clear career path. And EY definitely have presented that for us coming in. It's, you know, it's clear you come through from first year, second year to third year, and then ultimately qualify. And even beyond there, there's another career path that will take you right further for the rest of your career if you want. So that was my main driving force. I think it's really important to be able to be yourself and work. Um, everyone's going to bring a different attitude and perspective to different problems that are going to arise. So I think it is majorly important. And then EYs, like they hire from so many different backgrounds. Like not, I'm obviously I'm an accountant. Um, degree and but there's loads of people come from other degrees which are giving you different lines of thought that you would never have thought of and then um, also there's other things as well that identify it's not just of you know the lines of degree that we've come from but so many other things and again like in EY it's fostered through different networks there's you know the um, mental health network and disability network women's network and it goes on and on so it's it's wonderful just to be able to be yourself and you know you have that support and it makes you comfortable and ultimately where you're comfortable you're going to perform your best so um god i've learned a lot in the last year um it's probably been a very different year for everyone really like personally learned a lot and um definitely learned a lot about myself and about work um i'd say i definitely learned how to adapt and be versatile to changing situations and how to think outside the box when um, problems are arising and this probably really stemmed from the pandemic when we had this with the remote working but we had to still deliver for our clients you know the world we couldn't just all stop unfortunately um, 
So very quickly, we had to think of new ways to connect with our clients, get information from them securely, because um, we weren't sitting beside them anymore, but also timely, and then communicating results back to our clients. And then we also had to find ways to connect with our own teams, because we're not sitting in the same room, monitor progress, answer queries, manage people's workloads because you're not seeing what certain people are doing maybe things might go unnoticed and also trying to recognize people who are doing really well is again you would maybe don't see someone you know the person below me coaching a first year i wouldn't ultimately see that like i would if i was in the audit room so it was um just trying to find so many new ways and adapt so that's what i definitely learned that um we just had to adapt to everything and we had to go to Teams meetings, Zoom meetings, share screens for information. It was just, um, but ultimately I'd say we probably learned that working from home works and working remotely works. And then probably lastly, I learned how important the team was for us all. Be very similar to the advice I would have given all graduates. Again, probably you know, reiterating, being confident, ask questions, everyone needs to ask questions and understand why you're doing the task. But probably an additional thing and tailor to myself would be, don't try and be a, like a Superman, don't try and do everything. Yes, take opportunities, but you can't do everything and certainly not all at once um, and no one expects you to. So, you know, you're, you're looking at your managers, they're human too, they have other commitments as do you. So just remember that and don't take on too much and make sure you're comfortable because ultimately you're better doing a certain amount and perform it amazingly rather than doing too much and starting to not perform at those high levels. Yeah, look, I would say throw yourself into tasks and be confident when completing these tasks. Um, look to challenge yourself um, and make sure you are engaged in the job that you're in. Know what you will expect from your career and manage those expectations, but ultimately enjoy it it'll be a great journey and you'll look back on it so definitely make sure you're enjoying it and yeah and really think about that um it's really really important and you know you want to spend so much time we've touched on in work so really really make sure you enjoy it